leveling the Czech playing field. Um, yeah, because I feel that uh, the profession of technical communicators and technical writers is not properly uh, recognized in the Czech Republic and uh, sometimes not even properly paid. Uh, I would, that's what I would like to talk about today uh, and how and um, come up with some ideas how we can change the situation. So um, this is what I will talk about. Uh, I will say something uh, about um, where I work now or um, for which companies I work now because I'm a freelan freelancer now. Uh, then I would like to say something about uh, the problem in general. Uh, and then I will talk about how universities uh, come uh, into the picture and uh, uh, what Techcom Europe can help us to do about it. Uh, and uh, actually uh, other companies and organizations, what they do about it. Uh, in other countries or in the Czech Republic. Uh, and then in the end, I would like to propose uh, how to keep building our Czech community of technical writers and communicators. So um, I currently, uh, I like to say that I'm a tech writer in residence, but in fact, um, just a lead technical writer uh, in uplifting. Uh, I can tell you the name of the company is very fitting because uh, they have a very unique uh, work culture and uh, organization structure. Uh, they leave a lot of uh, independence and responsibility to each individual and uh, they don't have, um, they have flat uh, hierarchy in the company, or we, perhaps I should say. Uh, and um, uh, I've been working there for uh, since, um, since March. Yes, yeah, sorry, my, my cat is uh, participating in this. Uh, I've been working there since March and uh, it's been really brilliant in there. Uh, what do we do? Uh, we do um, web applications and mobile applications mainly, uh, but um, we also um, we also do something that's called developer experience. Uh, that's uh, what the other brand. Uh, tries to do or does. Uh, and uh, uh, it's about uh, it's about imp improving how developers work and uh, to make their work um, more fun and uh, and uh, so that they can enjoy it. Um, yeah, and uh, the main uh, documentation we work on is uh, highly technical uh, because we built everything on microservices uh, and uh, REST APIs, so APIs. So uh, what we do is that we document uh, maybe eight, <laughs> mainly APIs and um, yeah, we also do to improve developer experience. Uh, we also design um, developer portals, uh, which is uh, somewhere between um, documentation for APIs and uh, self-service portals uh, for developers. So that's what I do now or these days. And um, actually, uh, how I would like to level up the Czech playing fields. 
uh, is uh, to let people know uh, that we exist and uh, that we are ex experts on something that is uh, highly uh, cross, um, yeah, how, how do I say it? That uh, it spans across several fields, uh, how we are useful to other people, uh, to other uh, department, departments in companies, to, so to speak, um, what we can do for them and that we do it and that we do it well. And we want to get well, get well paid for it, right? Uh, because uh, we are not just um, uh, editors and typesetters, we do also uh, specialist IT work. Um, the links, uh, there are links in the presentation that you can check out later. Uh, it's um, actually, let me, let me open them. Uh, these are uh, about uh, the uh, official definitions of two uh, job occupations. The first one is called technical editor and uh, it's about document preparation. But uh, honestly, I think this is only half uh, of our job. Uh, if uh, you were, especially if you work in um, uh, software documentation. Yeah, actually, I would like to ask a question. Uh, are we all software technical writers or is there someone who does uh, documentation of hardware or heavy machinery? Nobody? Okay, so on the software, okay. So then for us, uh, it applies especially that we do also this. We are IT specialists. And uh, as you can see, uh, the difference in the pay is quite significant, I would say, because uh, we, Especially now, at my current position, I do, I do business analysis, technical analysis. Well, yes, uh, but uh, at some points, uh, we, we don't do just uh, um, editing or proofreading. Uh, we design architectures of uh, uh, knowledge bases. Um, we we need to uh, tell developers what we need to them when we need some automation or uh, development of innovations. So we actually do the analytical work as well. And uh, actually, I missed the definition in this database. What do you think? Yeah, and of course, as, uh, yeah, then. Yeah, and actually as uh, team leaders and managers, we have troubles finding uh, more employees uh, and qualified employees. Uh, who else uh, is a manager or a team leader here? Do you have the same problem, finding people who are good at it? Vendula. No? <laughs> Not sure how <laughs> to answer. <laughs> well, were, uh, were you hiring someone or during uh, your work in, in Red Hat? Or didn't you participate in, in this process? Uh, I, I did, but not many times so far. So, uh, uh, and uh, I must say that there is a huge difference uh, in where you are trying to hire people. Here in the Czech Republic, it is definitely a problem. Yes. Uh, for example, in, in the US, uh, there is a guild. There are te technical writers are very aware of how useful they are. They have universities. 
uh, university programs. So it's a completely different story, but we need to wor work on this topic more, definitely. Yes, so my point precisely. Okay, and uh, what do they want? And by they, I mean, uh, I mean the industry, the companies who need us. <laughs> And I think I think they they need to sell their products and uh, good documentation uh, of software is a big factor when someone is evaluate when someone evaluates several products of the same functionality. Uh, then, uh, when uh, the documentation is not good, uh, you have. Uh, too many requests uh, to your technical support or customer support. So you want good documentation to take off the load uh, from your uh, support. Uh, then what you want next is uh, if, you're, if uh, it is a bigger company, uh, then you need uh, efficient communication across your teams and departments and the technical writers or technical communicators uh, are experts uh, in this communication and they can help you improve information flows. Uh, for example, the first problem uh, I ran into uh, was that uh, I uh, release a new edition of documentation, but nobody reads it because nobody knows I published it. So. I need to add notification into, uh, into the information flow to, uh, yeah, to, to let people know that uh, something uh, was uh, published. Uh, then, of course, part of the job is uh, knowledge management, how to organize uh, uh, not just your know-how, but uh, all paperwork uh, that you have uh, in your company and that you share um, across your departments. So uh, I think that uh, technical communicators uh, can help with this too. Yeah, but uh, yeah, and they want employees and they already want skilled and educated employees. They uh, don't have, uh, they don't want to, um, well, actually, they would prefer not to uh, invest money into edu educating them uh, because it's time consuming and um, uh, and uh, people can uh, take your course and then uh, run away to work uh, to another company where they will get more money, right? So, This is uh, what I see and the problem as the problems and now what to do about it. And now I mean in the Czech Republic. Well, we need to, to promote uh, in universities uh, and uh, uh, start teaching courses in universities. If someone feels so inclined, inclined I do. Uh, I taught a lecture uh, this uh, spring uh, in the Charles University for librarians and uh, in students of uh, information studies or something like that. I'm not sure. Um, uh, I'm calling uh, the, uh, the field correctly, but it was something of the sort. Um, and um, we could also establish uh, technical communication or technical writing programs in universities. Uh, uh, I will talk about it later, but uh, now, nowadays uh, there are scattered uh, courses, uh, but uh, but there is no uh, systematic education. Yeah, and uh, it's also important that uh, our companies become 
industry partners for internships so that uh, uh, students can uh, have practice actually. Uh, or we could at least, another option would be also to provide commercial courses. So um, private courses, uh, for example, for big companies to train the staff uh, to do quality documentation or to provide uh, courses to the public. And then of course, uh, we need to promote technical writing on IT conferences to tell uh, programmers uh, and other stakeholders uh, in software uh, that uh, we can help them with them with their problems and eventually promote uh, on conferences of other industries although uh, I think that uh, in uh, machinery and heavy industry uh, guessing by the courses in universities, uh, this job is uh, well established, uh, but uh, we might think of other industries where we could be needed. Uh, and of course, uh, we don't have to do this alone. Uh, we can look uh, to uh, established organizations uh, for help. Um, yes, uh, Techcom Europe is my favorite, but, uh, and it, it's also the biggest in Europe and the closest. So now, wh what is the current situation at the universities? Yes, as I said before, there are scattered co courses here or there, but no programs. Uh, as such, you cannot study uh, technical communication or technical writing. Um, uh, as a as a field of study, uh, so uh, there is some uh, engineering oriented courses uh, in Prague uh, at the Technical University in Prague. Uh, yeah, that's electrotechnical, but uh, no software. Yeah, then Lenka will. I'm sure she will introduce her subject. Uh, uh, in Liberec. Uh, then uh, there is some uh, mechanics and heavy machinery subjects. Uh, yeah, then in Brno there is introduction to technical writing, but that's actually focused on developing your uh, written language skills, not much uh, about the structure or methodology of uh, uh, of uh, technical writing as such. Yeah, then there were some subjects uh, on electrotechnical faculty and FM is again uh, um, mechanical. Yeah, uh, on Masaryk University Faculty of Informatics, there are um, many subjects uh, that point, uh, that turn out to be very useful in this, uh, in this uh, expertise. Uh, and uh, formerly there was a specialty uh, in bachelor program, which was called text information systems. Uh, and um, it comprised uh, these subjects. Uh, these are examples, the list uh, is not uh, exhaustive, um, but uh, I've checked and uh, they don't have this specialty anymore. Uh, and uh, I think it's a pity. I was supposed to uh, give a lecture at Masaryk University this spring, but uh, because of uh, Corona, there was really no chance. So I will try again next year, maybe. Okay, so now how Techcom Europe can help. Uh, well, first and foremost, they have developed cross-industry competence framework for technical communicators. You can check it out uh, on the website. Um, yeah, also this year they started uh, an initiative which is called the University Network 
uh, it's supposed to bring together um, people from academia and um, uh, to discuss um, uh, to discuss how you can introduce courses in technical writing or technical communication or even programs and you can uh, get help from them. Uh, there is uh, an advisory board uh, of people uh, from academia from the whole Europe uh, with, who, with whom you can discuss how to do it uh, and perhaps even uh, get uh, more help than just advice. I'm not sure. Uh, I, I had one meeting with them. Uh, they seem really nice people. And uh, uh, if you want, Lenka, I can send you an invitation so you can join the network. Well, you are already, you're, you're already successful with uh, introducing the subject. But uh, if you, uh, if you yeah. needed some kind of uh, uh, support, uh, you will be very welcome, I'm sure. Okay, that's nice. I will for sure uh, try to join. Okay, brilliant. Mm -hmm. Brilliant. I will send you uh, an invitation yeah. later. Thank you very much. Yes, yeah, so, yeah, then of course, then Techcom Europe uh, participates uh, in industry standardization. Uh, I believe. Um, there are some uh, content, uh, software documentation, content development standards. Uh, I don't remember the numbers now, but uh, uh, these uh, standards are developed uh, by all three major uh, standardization platforms, uh, ISO, IEEE, and uh, IEC. Am I saying that correctly? And I'm pretty sure that Techcom Europe uh, participates uh, in uh, uh, in developing this these standards as well. So, um, uh, if uh, if we uh, if uh, uh, if a member uh, if uh, you you would be or me or our country or your company, if you would be a member of Techcom Europe, uh, you could actually join the standardization advisory board and uh, participate in, in the development of standards. So I think, I think it would be uh, great, for example, to have Czech uh, translation of these standards. Uh, and of course, uh, TECOM provides um, financial support and advisory support, of course, uh, to their chapters or uh, country members. So if we were to start uh, our local chapter, we could uh, also actually receive some budget uh, if uh, we meet their conditions, but their condi conditions aren't that, uh, rough. Uh, what uh, I remember, the only condition was that uh, there are four uh, meetups a year. So, uh, who else uh, supports technical writing in the Czech Republic? There are some training providers. Uh, oh yeah, this one is not in the Czech Republic, but it's... Um, uh, very close to us. Uh, it's a Polish uh, organization or platform. Uh, it has a very interesting and very long name. Uh, and uh, I guess the name is inspired by the uh, Software Testing uh, Association, or how do you call it? Uh, they have created a syllabus, uh, which is uh, something like, um, well, it's basically, it's basically a book that uh, is uh, quite exhaustive. It's about technical writing. Uh, it's free for download uh, and uh, uh, it's quite good uh, for self-study. Uh, and uh, the foundation provides uh, certification. 
uh, which is uh, their um, commercial well service. Uh, they have a group of training providers uh, who are uh, certified by the, by the foundation and they provide technical writing courses. Um, I've been in touch with them a couple of years ago and they wanted to expand to the Czech Republic. Uh, but um, I didn't like that they were uh, so commercial. So I would have uh, to uh, invest a lot of time and money to become their training and exam provider in the Czech Republic. And I simply didn't like that. Um, yeah, then, then they have exam providers uh, who uh, uh, organize uh, the exams for the certification. Um, and they also must be certified by the foundation and they are also commercial. So, um, well, I was never sure if it's a good idea to uh, collaborate with them or not, uh, I would love to hear your opinions. Well, we... we, mm. we uh, I, I don't know uh, about, about this Polish company, but I definitely know that Techcom has high quality technical writing courses, but these are quite expensive. I think last time I checked, it was 2000 euros uh, per person. Uh, and also we have Williams Technical in Prague, Fred Williams. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes, you on my next slide. <laughs> and yeah, so so ah I, I can I can see it. So so you can share it with us. And uh, but I think that's all. I also uh, met on the T C World uh, conference organized by Techcom for women who are researchers who got uh, money to prepare and build syllabus for all levels of technical writing courses at universities. So if we would find a university where they would like to have the whole study, uh, there is a program prepared uh, for money from European Union and it's for high schools, for bachelor degrees, for uh, and for second level and third level. So even for PhD, they have a program for wow. technical writers. So, uh, and, but it it's three it's three years ago. Yes. So I don't know where they are right now. I think they're finished actually <laughs> with the, all the all the hard work. So. Uh, but but I, I didn't I'm not in touch with any particular university to suggest something like that. Yeah, uh, Vendula, can you uh, send me their names once again? I think I remember you telling me a couple of years ago, uh, but I don't I didn't remember them when I was joining uh, the university network in Tecom. Mm. Uh, so I can check whether they are already there and connect them at least. Okay, I, I'll try. I, I took screenshots in my phone. I still have the same iPhone, so I, I think I can. <laughs> yeah, I, I have I the find pictures. It. Okay, uh, we'll check later. And there, okay. there are there are addresses and everything, but yeah, it's yeah, quite cool. Okay, okay th thank you for the reminder. That's that's very useful. Mm. Uh, we can try to go this way too. Okay, so Fred Williams uh, teaches technical writing in the Czech Republic, uh, in Prague, I think. Uh, Fred uh, also joined uh, our first year of, the, of this workshop. Uh, and uh, yeah, perhaps we will invite him again. Uh, I think that Fred's course is for beginners. Uh, for beginners, he definitely has something to say. He has a lot of material sources. I went through his course uh, and uh, it helped me when I started with technical writing. But, but 
uh, don't expect something more. But, but for beginners, for people who need to know the standards, who want to write, uh, who want to start to use minim minimalism and simplified English, who want to start to base task-oriented documentation, uh, he, is, uh, he is quite good teacher and uh, have, have the knowledge. Yeah. But his his course is his own, so you, you will receive a certificate, but it's not anything formal you could use in your CV, actually. Yeah, thanks, Vandulal, uh, for your reference uh, about Fred. Uh, I also had a remark in my notes that Kentico used to provide uh, technical writing course for beginners and uh, I believe we have here someone from Kentico. Uh, can you comment on that? I, I'm sorry, I'm not sure about the name. I, yeah, it was me actually. Uh, yeah, this was not really a course for technical writing or not, not something I'm aware of at least. It was more for the developers to later start uh, working at Kentico. So maybe it was way before I started here and I just don't know about it. Possibly. Uh, I, I haven't checked uh, when I noted it, but it's possible it could have been like three years ago or even longer. Uh, and it was definitely a um, public facing course uh, on the Kentico website. Otherwise, uh, I don't think I would know about it. That's interesting. So, I have to look into it. <laughs> yeah. So, and uh, now I want to ask everyone, do you know uh, about uh, any other training providers or public courses in the Czech Republic? You can also let me know uh, in, in the chat or at the end of the presentation, I should move on. Okay, so now what can we uh, do? To Katka, the... Kat, Katka mentioned in the chat that she knows a course in uh, Udemy, it is a paid one. So Katka, tell us something more. You went through this training. Yeah, that was, uh, that was actually at the beginning of my transition to the full-time technical writer. Because I was also looking on the internet at the, at the time, it was in 2014. And uh, this was the only course I found. Uh, it's very popular, but to be honest, uh, either I'm, I'm a prodigy <laughs> or I don't understand because for me there was not too much to learn there. Even though I was not really a trained or full-time writer, I probably do a lot of things like instinctively. So I didn't learn a lot. And at the beginning, what was the asset, but I didn't finish it on time before it gets too popular. The instructor, uh, because you had uh, to write some documentation and the instructor went personally through that. And he gave you personal feedback. Uh, but uh, now it's not possible anymore because you have like thousands of people there. So he doesn't do it anymore. And uh, when I also checked, I think one year ago, uh, it was mentioned on Reddit that overall, I would say there are way more books uh, on this topic than the courses. Hmm. Quite possibly. And uh, I'm not sure uh, if there is uh, a book in Czech at all. I know that Lenka uh, has been working on trans translating one. Yeah, that's still in process, <clears throat> as there is deadline in the next summer. <laughs> so I have the book and a third of it is translated. I will have it in my presentation. Cool, yeah. I'm looking forward. But there aren't uh, any other books in Czech about technical writing, are there? I don't think so. Oh, yeah. Nothing like that. That's what and, I think. And Lena, Lena, we have another comment from Levy. I know Google has a free tech writing course, which is uh, rather decent. So I it's see. it's not in Czech, I guess, Levy. Uh, no, it, is, uh, it is in English. 
Mm-hmm. Well, most resources for technical writing would be in English in one way or another, unfortunately. Yeah, yeah I, I have noticed uh, Udemy uh, when I was uh, doing my research and I think I noticed even Google and I'm really curious to check it out. So thanks, thanks noting. Uh, but yeah, I, I don't think there are uh, any courses uh, specifically uh, in the Czech Republic. And uh, what I was wondering about, um, do you think uh, it's more important to study this field in English or um, is it, would it be also useful uh, to provide courses uh, in Czech? Well, I think it should be English because the documentation is mainly in English, right? Or yeah. How, it, how, how many of you, uh, uh, how many of you uh, have worked for a company that requires documentation in the Czech language? If it's, I, it's I mainly, used to. Ah, okay. Me too. <laughs> All right. Then I'm probably, probably wrong. We have some we have some documentation in Czech, but I actually I agree that it it doesn't seem very useful for me translating these courses to Czech. Mm. I think it should be sufficient in English. And we worked previously in the Czech language, not at Red Hat, but in a previous company, and then translated it in English. And the translation was not good, never. It was not minimalistic because uh, Czech language doesn't use, uh, you know, English is not so wordy or chatty. You can use very, very strict wording in English and it still works. So actually it was me who changed this pattern and we started to uh, write in English and then translate it into Czech and it works much better for for both versions of the documentation actually. <clears throat> yeah, that was uh, that's what I was afraid of. Yeah, our forefathers would cry for us. Hmm. Okay. And there is, a, Luis ha, has a comment, there is a two-year distance learning course run by a university in Ireland, which sounds interesting. Luis, can you tell us something more? Is it a university program, so there is a bachelor degree or or is it all, only certificate study? What, what is it? Well, actually, I, I, have, I, mean, I don't know a huge amount of it. It's a two-year course and in theory you're supposed to already have a degree, so. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, but you can, um, get an entrance also with, you know, previous experience, you'd obviously have to provide, you know, yeah. if you were already doing technical writing for 20 years or something, you could probably <laughs> um, get into the course as well. I don't know an awful lot about it. Um, it's supposed to be quite good. And obviously it gives you an actual official qualification in technical writing. So. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, there are right. options yeah. everywhere except the Czech Republic. <laughs> thank you. But thank well, you anyway. Is it uh, is it provided for free? No, no. It's no. It's a two year program. I don't know how much it is in total because I. It's a long time since I even looked um, at the course. I just did a quick. It is still there, but um, and I've worked with a few people who did the course. Hmm. I think it's quite good. Um. I well, think it at started least, at least we could get inspired there as well. Yeah, I think it started here for the similar reasons to a lot of what you're talking about, actually, to try to promote technical writing in Ireland, which is now quite established. But um, at the time, it would, you know, when I started, I'd never even heard of a technical writer. I didn't even know what it was when someone mentioned it to me. So, you know. Yeah, and perhaps uh, could you provide any contact? Uh, I would like to check whether they are in the Tecom University Network. Sure, I can send you details. Okay, brilliant. Thank you. No problem. Uh, okay. So... Anyway, if you if you want something closer, there are two universities uh, which have university programs in Germany. So I think it's, it's closest option if you want some formal education in technical writing. I think there is also something in Poland, because at least that's Bogdan, who is a technical writer for Motorola, and 
he runs the meetups in Brno. That's what he mentioned. And one of the meetups we have here. But I don't know the language of the course. But it's great news. I didn't know about this one. Okay, so uh, we're a little bit under time pressure, so I will uh, I will move on. So uh, I have some ideas how we can build the Czech community. Uh, I know about two interest groups in the Czech Republic. Uh, the one is uh, us, the Technical Writers Workshop, uh, and the other one is Czech Writers Brno. Uh, they have a group uh, on Facebook and I think also in LinkedIn. Uh, but uh, do you know about any others? Um, about any other? Mm, I, I would add the uh, the tech, tech home because we wanted to organize a meetup in Prague. Yeah, uh, right. They, tech home, they, they, but they, they, the yeah. organizer went to maternity leave, and but she should be back already. But I think because everything went virtual, uh, she didn't get back to us yet. But that's also option. Yeah, they, they really want to expand to the Czech Republic. They organized uh, uh, a get together last year in Prague, uh, which was before the uh, conference about uh, translation, technical translation and localization. I don't know what it was called anymore. Yeah, never mind. But uh, they are really interested uh, in. Uh, um, cooperation uh, with someone local. Uh, I'm in touch uh, with a couple of them. Uh, I still haven't become a member yet. Uh, a little bit ashamed about that, but uh, it's on my list. Um, and uh, I actually uh, would prefer uh, cooperation with Techcom instead of uh, the Polish one. Well, okay. Anyway, let's unite these interest groups. Uh, what I would like to propose uh, is to uh, introduce a platform for technical communication experts and other stakeholders. Uh, there should be um, there should be a website and. Uh, uh, actually, the four meetings a year so that we can uh, financial support from Techcom. Um, what should be the activities uh, of the platform? Uh, I would like uh, to uh, define uh, the terminology and, uh, uh, well, the profession and uh, the f terminology respectively, but uh, since uh, we just discussed that uh, it might be not that useful in Czech because most of us uh, write for the international environment anyway, I'm not sure about the field terminology now because we have a Czech meeting and we have it in English. So why do you, what do you need Czech for? Uh, okay, well, we don't have to discuss that now. And uh, other activities should be local promotion of the professions in universities, in companies, while well, letting people know that we exist and uh, what we do. Uh, we should have a local job market uh, and some networking options for freelancers. Uh, we should do the events, uh, as I said, at least for a year. Now we have one uh, with, the, with the group in Brno, we could have two. Uh, so we would have to uh, do more, but I suppose that uh, uh, online events uh, do count and they have to count because we live in the new world. Uh, and uh, then we should also um, or could provide uh, edu some education options like courses or at least uh, um, provide information where people can get education and uh, mediate uh, contacts uh, between the industry uh, and universities. And also uh, we should be a platform uh, for advice and support 
uh, not just uh, for beginners in the field, but uh, also um, for discussion uh, between uh, us uh, who have been in the field for a longer time uh, and we are, for example, solving some difficult problem at work and uh, we need to discuss it with someone or validate our ideas or stuff like that. Uh, and uh, I was trying to come up uh, with uh, some ideas for the name. Uh, and uh, I was wondering uh, what uh, the term for the platform or the community should be. And I don't like the word community. So uh, in the left uh, column, you can see, uh, well, let's say the form of the platform. Uh, and uh, in the right column, you can see some ideas uh, for how to specify the expertise uh, of uh, the platform. So uh, when you are on a break, please uh, think uh, which, yeah, and uh, the left column and the right column uh, can combine, like connect, uh, which you like or well, it can just combine well randomly. Okay, but we don't have time to discuss that now, so uh, we can get back to it later. Well, that's basically all from me.